should probably move this here. Hello, everybody. Welcome. My name is Matt. I'm from RollerCaribbeanBlog.com, and we are hanging out with you guys today on YouTube talking about main dining room tips, strategies, and everything you need to know to have a really great main dining room experience. And, of course, if you're looking for more Royal Caribbean news, information, advice, tips, everything you need to have a great cruise, check out RollerCaribbeanBlog.com. RollerCaribbeanBlog.com. And we talk about the main dining room. Number one tip, and this is something that if you've cruised a lot is obvious, but if you've never cruised before, I don't think it's very obvious at all. And that is order more than one of anything. And you're in the main dining room. You know, let's forget that for a second. When you go to a restaurant on land, typically you only order like maybe an you order an entree, maybe one appetizer and a dessert. That'd be considered to be a pretty big meal right there, right? But in the dining room on a Royal Caribbean ship. You can actually order as much of anything you want. Well, you can order multiple appetizers, multiple entrees. Heck, you can order multiples of the same dish. Maybe you discover something you really like. Feel free to order. Oops, sorry. Feel free to order more of those. Uh, that way, you can try out and branch some new, branch out and try some new things. Or you can also just indulge in some favorites. So if you find something you like, order more of it. Um, also, keeping in mind that the the, the serving sizes in the dining room on a Royal Caribbean ship are kind of small. Uh, you know, when you order, you know, a certain dish, like an appetizer or even an entree, it's not usually as large in serving size as you might find at a typical restaurant. So, something to keep in mind. Number two tip for you when you're talking about uh, tips for the main dining room on a Royal Caribbean ship is make your dietary requests before you board. Um, if you have a dietary restriction, such as you're vegetarian, you need gluten-free foods, or really any dietary need, you should let Royal Caribbean know up front before the cruise. Royal Caribbean can accommodate special needs such as uh, food allergies, gluten-free, kosher, low-fat, and sodium. In addition, they'll be their vegetarian meals, including uh, Indian-style vegetarian, which is one of my favorites. I love Indian food. Uh, they're available on all menus in the dining room, so you don't need to make special requests for veggie meals. If you're vegetarian, you're good. Uh, if you're lactose-free or you require soy milk, ensure, and kosher meals are available at no extra charge. All you have to do is let Royal Caribbean know in advance at least 45 days prior to your sailing for North American cruises and 90 days for European and South American itineraries. Your best bet if you have a dietary request is to send an email to special underscore needs at rccl.com. Special underscore needs at rccl.com. Include your uh, name, booking number, ship name, and sale date and send that before your cruise that way you're when you get to the dining room they're going to be ready for you they're going to know about it and you'll be all set so there you go uh tip number uh two right there tip number three for a great main dining room experience on a royal Caribbean ship is you can change your table assignment believe it or not it's not assigned forever it's not like being back in elementary school where they say you must sit here until further notice no you can change it up if you'd like you know, there's a couple of reasons why you may want to change your table potentially perhaps the people you're seated with are not to your liking perhaps the view you have is not ideal uh perhaps the waiter you're having is not to your liking or whatever the reason may be you can change your table assignment uh, all you have to do is speak to the head waiter now of course speaking to the head waiter and ask making the request is subject to availability but in my experience i find that there's usually a fair amount of uh options for you now before the cruise you might be already knowing you want to make a table, a special request. Like, the most common ex common request I always find from people going on a cruise in the main dining room is, I want to be seated alone. I want a table for two. Just me and my spouse. Wouldn't it be nice to have a nice meal out together uh, and not have, not, you know, that we don't like sitting with other people, but for this cruise, we want to be a little more intimate. What you can do is send an email to rcldining, one word, rcldining at rccl.com, about three to four weeks prior to your sailing, again, letting them know your name, your reservation number, what ship you're on, and the sail date, and letting them know, hey, I'd like to have a table for two. Uh, send that email about three to four weeks prior to RCL Dining at rccl.com, and you should be able to uh, have that all set for you. And, of course, we are hanging out here on YouTube. We're actually doing this video live on today's broadcast. Uh, we do this every Friday. We are live here on YouTube hanging out. Uh, talking Royal Caribbean. So we're starting out with some great tips for a main dining room experience. And we're going to jump to some questions in the chat a little bit later. So uh, please, guys, feel free to uh, uh, get those questions ready because we're going to go right to you guys in here in just a little bit. Tip number four in the main dining room. You can bring your own wine. Did you know that? You can bring your own wine that you brought from home, favorite brand. You can bring it on a cruise. Royal Caribbean allows you to bring up to two bottles of wine per stateroom on a Royal Caribbean cruise. And what that means is you can bring the bottle to the, you can bring that bottle of wine to the dining room 
have your waiter open it, and they'll actually store it for you. So on night one, you bring the wine. I brought this wine. Isn't it great? Uh, can you open it for us, please? Okay, so you have a couple sips of it. Maybe you have a, a glass or two. Your spouse has a glass or two. But you have a half the bottle of wine left. Your waiter will store it for you. The next day, they can uh, bring it back to the table for you. In fact, if you go somewhere else on night two, maybe go to Chop's Grill on night two for a nice dinner out, you can let them know that you have a bottle of wine, an open bottle of wine down in the dining room. They, your waiter at Chop's will go and get it, and then vice versa. So keep that in mind when you're bringing your own wine. I should point out there may be a small corkage fee assessed for you. What that is is when you open a bottle of wine at a restaurant or like the dining room, they may charge you with that. I say may because technically the rule is they will, but in practice it's not always uh, enforced. So kind of a, a uh, something to keep in mind. Uh, next tip, order the food the way you want it. Um, you know, don't be afraid to ask your waiter for special requests. It, not even dietary needs. Like, you know, I can't eat this. It's not, I'm not talking about that. Because we talk, covered that already. But something you really love. Like, maybe you like having a plate of vegetables to start your dinner off with. My class, I do this every cruise. You know what I do? Every sailing I go to, night one in the main dining room, I ask my waiter, and I said, I love Indian food. In addition to whatever I order off the menu, can I also get uh, Indian curry uh, in uh, every night? And it's no problem at all for them to... Uh, Take care of that for you. Apologize for that. Uh, in general, though, when you're talking about making special requests, whether, again, it's a curry, plate of something else, uh, you know, something off the menu, they usually take, they need about 24-hour heads up advance notice for some of those requests. Sometimes it's as easy as, oh, yeah, we got that. You know, like the classic example is like a hot dog for kids or a slice of pizza. They can probably work that out. But when you're talking about maybe uh, something more sp special or specific, rather, uh, they may need 24 hours uh, to let the chef's crew be able to accommodate you. But they're usually pretty accommodating. So again, order what you want. Let them know what you like. And if you like dinner a certain way or you like a, something served to you in a particular manner, they can definitely have um, an option for you. Tip number six for a great dining room experience are bring extras back to your room. You can do that. Did you know if you have leftovers? You know, you're eating. There's a lot of food coming to the main dining room, right? You're enjoying a great meal there. Oh, you're kind of full. But man, you know in about an hour you're going to want to finish that last couple bites of spaghetti or maybe the cookies that came with dessert, or maybe your dessert in general. The good news is you can take anything from the dining room, and they will give you essentially a doggy bag. What they do is they just put it in a plate, cover it up, and they can, you can bring it back to your room. So if you're running, if you're short on time, if you just want to grab something, you know, eat something, maybe eat like your appetizer and entree and take the dessert somewhere else, uh, if you have leftovers you want to eat later, you can do that. Uh, just ask your waiter. I'll be happy to arrange it for you. In fact, oftentimes, if you ask them, say, hey, I've got like two bites of spaghetti left here. Can I bring that to my room? They'll probably say yes, and we're also going to give you another plate of spaghetti just in case that that's not enough for you. So, again, don't feel bad about asking for those uh, doggy bags, if you will, for uh, bringing back. And, again, you can take that anywhere on the ship. Sometimes people like to have maybe, maybe it's a really nice evening out. You have your, your meal, but you want to have your dessert somewhere else. Feel free to do that. Tip number seven. Uh, you may enjoy also the we talk about you know, we talk about the main dining room we talk about dinner a lot right primarily that's the focus of the main dining room but the main dining room is open for lunch and breakfast too every morning it will be open for breakfast for certain times uh, on sea days the main dining room is also open for lunch now what I like about the main dining room for breakfast and lunch is uh, for breakfast it is a great alternative to the wind jammer it's a lot less crowded it's a lot it's also a nicer pace for breakfast great for sea days you know you're kind of just taking it easy you're not in a rush anywhere perfect uh place to have breakfast in the in the main dining room because it's just a nicer way to kind of you know take it easy in the morning uh on sea days by the same token the main dining room will be open for lunch it's a great choice they have a special menu it's a different menu every day and the lunch menu is not the same as the dinner menu so you get a little more variety of food and in my experience also a lot sometimes on on the lunch menu you get some really interesting choices there, and I like that a lot. So, really, really uh, good tip right there for folks that are uh, checking out the uh, main dining room, not just for dinner, breakfast, and lunch. Tip number eight, if you're doing my time dining, you definitely want to make as many reservations as possible before the cruise. What I mean by that is if you're doing my time dining, yes, you can wait to board the ship and make reservations or simply show up, but in my, my experience and my advice is, if you want to wait the least, if you want to be able to just get in there and eat your food and then move on somewhere else and minimize your waiting around, you definitely want to make reservations in advance. You can make reservations for My Time Dining uh, before your cruise via Royal Caribbean's Cruise Planner website. So by going there, you can uh, log, you basically log into your cruise. You know, this is where you purchase the drink packages, your specialty restaurant uh, reservations, shore excursions, and whatnot. There'll also be another option over there 
for my time dining. So you should make as many as you can. Look, I get it. If there's one or two days you're not so sure, plans are kind of fluid. That's the nature of my time dining. But if at all possible, try to make reservations because it will definitely minimize um, the uh, the weight you'll experience uh, on my with my time dining, especially if you're looking for peak dining times. What is peak dining times remains my time dining? We're talking between uh, 630 and I'll say 8 o'clock. Anytime around that time, that's when you receive the most demand for dinner with my time dining. If you choose to eat dinner before 630 or after 8 o'clock, you'll probably, reservations are not nearly as critical um, for those times because, quite frankly, not as many people are looking to eat at that time, so there's a lot more availability. But if you are looking to eat between 630 and 8, definitely make as many reservations as you can. You, you, it, only, you only, it behooves you to do so, and you only stand to benefit from that. Tip number nine for a great dining room experience on a Royal Caribbean ship is pack for formal nights. Yes, uh, you will have a formal night on your cruise. Uh, depending on your ship and uh, how long your, your sailing is, you may have probably one or two formal nights on the cruise. There are a couple exceptions, like Empress of the Seas doesn't do formal night, and Mariner of the Seas, uh, they don't call it formal night anymore. They call it, like, wear your best or something like that, regardless. There is an evening in which there will be a different dress code. Now, don't worry. I know what you're thinking. Oh my God! It's gonna be like a scene out of like uh, it's not, it's high school prom all over again. No, 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 no. Despite the name formal night or whatever they call it, it's just basically night in which you dress up a little bit nicer than the other nights. You don't have to go crazy. You can certainly wear tuxedos and ball gowns and 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 dress like you're uh, in a turn of the century uh, uh, Broadway show or something like that. Sure, go for it. But and and there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. But not a lot of people don't want to go quite to that to that length. For formal night, though, really what we're talking about is just something a little bit nicer than you wore on the other nights of the cruise. So for guys, I often say a collared shirt, jacket optional. You know, like basically, you know, a, a nice collared shirt. You can wear a tie if you want, maybe a jacket, something like that. For ladies, we're talking about, well, I'm not a fashion expert, so uh, I will defer to um, uh, Sherry from Cruise Tips TV for is the fashionista of this uh, discussion. But I will say, you know, obviously, you know, cocktail dresses... Um, something you might wear out to a party kind of thing. And again, it's you don't have to go crazy with it, but you should know that formal nights exist. On uh, cruises that are four nights or less, uh, you're going to have, actually five nights or less, you're going to have one formal night almost always on night two. If you're a longer cruise, you'll have two formal nights on very long itineraries that I doubt anyone's really going on. Theoretically, you'll have three formal nights, but it's very rare for that to happen. So, all right. Uh, number 10. My number 10 tip here for the main dining experience is to enjoy it. I know that there's like so many things to do on your cruise. So many great, wonderful activities, shore excursions, shows. I mean, Royal Caribbean packs their ship full of so many things. Um, but really, one of the things I really love in the main dining room is that it's kind of a throwback to the old style of cruising. And my advice is to let loose and enjoy the main dining room experience. Don't try to make the main dining room into your regular dining room or dinner routine at home. It's not that. What it should be is an opportunity for you to kind of relax, take a nice leisurely meal, because that's what it'll be, and an opportunity to really maybe indulge some really great food with excellent service, and it's that's really what the dining room is all about. You know, if you're looking for something that where you can wear shorts and you want to run in, grab something to eat, you know, in 20 minutes or less, hey, there's other choices, great alternatives to the dining room, but my advice is give the dining room a chance, go in there, uh, and I think you're really going to have a really nice time um, to, to experience that. So there you go, 10, I think... Very helpful tips for the main dining room, and I'm going to throw it over now to you guys because I want to hear what are do you have any questions about the main dining room? We're going to open up the our channel here to questions in general because every Friday night we hang out here talking Royal Caribbean cruises together. So I want to start saying hello to everybody in our chat. We've got uh, Midge here. Hello, Make It Blue. Hello, Dawn is here. Kathy Berry, welcome. Keisha. Chilling with Mo, we got Dinah, Kaylin, Amy, Ella, Anita is here. Barry Ballard, what's going on? Uh, Joe, I think, is watching me from JetBlue, which is awesome. Pascal leaves tomorrow for Liberty. Well, hello, Blue Ocean Life. Uh, Nada from Sydney, welcome. Uh, videos by David, hello, everyone. Seven days to a back-to-back -back on Harmony. Uh, happy we made the live chat this time. Awesome. Glad to hear that. Christine Davis says, thanks for the heads up on Oasis of the Seas coming to Bayo, New Jersey in 2020. Absolutely, that's big, big news, uh, literally and metaphorically, but yeah. 
Miss Marie. Miss Marie wants to know, is there a formal night on a three-night cruise? There is a formal night on a three-night cruise. It'll be on night two of your sailing. Yes. Uh, powerful female, great name. <laughs> Main dining room on Symphony was awesome, and I love the dance crew they did on the last night. And that's a great point there. It's something I talked about in the, at the end, tip number 10 right there when we were talking about our, our tips earlier. Uh, powerful female, which is that, you know, some of the nights there's a little there's dancing involved sometimes there's singing involved sometimes there you know there's a little bit of a, it's it, there's you know little quirks in the dining room it's silly yes obviously i think we all get that but you know what you're on vacation it's fun enjoy it. indulge in you'll have a lot better experience if you go with the flow and then try to sit there and be like mm, mm, i would never do i would never twirl towels in or napkins in my dinner table. Of course not. You're on a cruise. It's a different story there. <laughs> Hello, Mike Pastore. Kathy Drew, welcome. Glad to have you here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Justin in Atlanta says, Dining Room on Harmony was wonderful. They'll keep bringing you all the food you want. Absolutely, Justin. Great point. And you know what? To Justin's point, if you're looking, look, if there's, if you want more of something, let them know. I've been in situations in the dining room where, you know, I order, you know, one of these, one of these, one of these, one of these. All right. And I start eating and I realize... Well, this one thing is really good, and these other things, not so much. Don't be afraid to say to your waiter, you know what? I would love to have another one of these things, and you know, maybe I'm not going to finish that other one. It's okay. You're not getting charged for food that's left over. It's one of the best things about cruising. You get to really uh, as much as you want. A real Sasquatch is savory bites. Ask for savory bites. Yes, it's a old school cruising uh, tip right there. Back in the day, and not even that long ago, Royal Caribbean used to offer these savory bites, which are these um, ses uh, poppy seed rolls essentially they don't offer them on all ships anymore but you can ask for them they absolutely will do that for you hello ronnie from miami welcome uh justin you join late and miss the 10 points well no worries Justin. this video will be available for you to watch as soon as it's over and for you to uh watch again and see all those tips write down all the information over there hello robert osler welcome robert glad to have you here michelle paul 20 days of independence of the seas uh dinas is uh, great tips you're very welcome hello melody welcome DM, uh, hello and welcome. DM wants to know, do you have any info on Royal Green's 50th anniversary cruise? Would it be worth going, uh, would you go? Oh, D, that's a good question. Basically, the 50th anniversary cruise is the continuation of Royal Green's President's Cruises. It's a big celebratory cruise. The idea is, it's really, Royal Green's trying to, uh, they select one of these sailings to, you know, tell to Royal Caribbean fans, hey, if you love Royal Caribbean, come cruise on this particular sailing. And what's great about it is you get to meet a lot of other Royal Caribbean super fans, people that really get it and really enjoy Royal Caribbean. Um, I'm not going on it. Unfortunately, they keep announcing, Royal Caribbean, that is, keeps announcing these sailings like within a year of the sail date. I have already planned out, like, like I'm planning my 2020 cruises right now. So they by the time they'll announce 2020, I'll have already booked everything up there. So unfortunately, I don't have any more time. I'd like to go, D. But, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I don't have the time for it. But if you are looking to cruise with some Royal Caribbean super fans, well, then, my friend, good news, D. We do have also Royal Caribbean blog group cruises. In fact, our next group cruise is on Mariner of the Seas, March 15th and 18th. We're doing a back-to-back -back sailing. You can join us for one or both of the sailings, or either one, if you want to come on the second one as well. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Mariner of the Seas going back-to-back uh, back back on Mariner with two stops in Coco Cay. And, again, you can join us for one or, or both sailings. And we also have another group cruise in uh, July 4th of 2019. That's on Anthem of the Seas. And that is leaving out of Bayonne, New Jersey, on an amazing nine-night itinerary to Bermuda, San Juan, Labadee, St. Martin. It's be amazing. You can find more information on all these group cruises at that URL right at the bottom of your screen, royalcreenblog.com slash events, royalcreenblog.com slash events. Um, Ronnie just got off Symphony of the Seas. Best time ever. Dude, I love Symphony. Ronnie, what was your favorite thing about Symphony of the Seas? Uh, Justin Atlanta says, Lobster Night. Uh, they give you the lobster for free, but not the whole lobster. That's true. And they do have it. Hey, look, it's still lobster nonetheless. I'm not the biggest lobster fan in the whole wide world, Justin. So you're you're barking up the wrong tree if you're looking for sympathy for me. <laughs> uh, Deontay Johnson, I have an aqua theater two-bedroom room, but I need a one-bedroom. Is there a way to post your open bedroom to fill it? Uh, no, I see what you're saying. So, Deontay, you booked a two-bedroom room, but just for yourself, and you want to see if someone wants to come in there to take up that extra bed and or probably pay for it. Um, no, there's no formal means. Basically, you'd be on your own to find that in the same way that it's like, you know, it's like carpooling or going to a hotel. Royal Caribbean doesn't have a means of doing it, Deontay. Uh, you'd have to find someone in 
on the internet, essentially, or in your community to join you. I'd be wary of that, Deontay. Just, you know, you never know. People you've never met before, sharing a room for a week. Uh, what could possibly go wrong? Sheila is here, 51 Days till Harmony of the Seas. Uh, Makeup Blue says, is the vegetarian meals on a separate menu or is it included in the regular menu every night? Good question. The veg there are there will be vegetarian options on the regular menu uh, every night of the cruise. So you'll you'll get everyone will get seat. Uh, sorry, when you're seated, you'll get everyone will get handed a the menu for the evening. There will be some options that are inherently vegetarian on there. I would also point out that again, one of the tips we talked about earlier is that you can always make a request for something else in addition to. Maybe there was something on an evening before. Maybe you're just in the mood for a bowl of pasta and some sauce. Maybe you're in the you know what I mean. So don't feel like you're limited purely to that. Great example is the Indian curries. A lot of Indian curry is vegetarian, uh, unless, of course, it has meat in it. But you know what I mean. Like, there's a lot of um, vegetarian curry, and you can request that every night. So, again, work with your waiter. Let them know. You don't have to make a special request before the cruise because there's a lot of choices for vegetarian. But, you know, you have the option, the opportunity, if you will, to um, make those requests once you're on board the ship and let your waiter know. They can certainly work with you to find something. They're not going to let you go hungry on that one. Um, Nick, 36 Days of Symphony of the Seas. Nice. Um, let's see here. Uh, Ryan says, my waiter from the main dining room at Symphony was awesome. Uh, it makes you every night. I love the main dining room. I, I love the service you get in the main dining room. Truly, the wait staff there are incredible. They go above and beyond, really, to make everything awesome. It's, it's an incredible experience. That's what I love about it, you know? Hello, Shantra Williams. Hello, uh, Midge. Welcome. Glad to have you guys here. Um, Jess is going on uh, Symphony of the Seas one month and 11 days from right now. Kathy, Drew, and Denise all are all about the pumpkin seed rolls in the main dining room. There are a lot of great rolls you're going to get. When you sit in the main dining room, they're gonna be, you're going to be served literally a basket tray full of different dinner rolls that you can have at any point during your meal. Obviously, a lot of people start with it first, but... Lots and lots of good choices there. Uh, Schmael, nine days little wastes of the seas. Nice. Uh, Christine says, love seeing all the countdowns. Thought I was the only one who did that. No, absolutely. In fact, I always encourage you guys to share how many days till your next Royal Caribbean cruise in our uh, in our chat. Because, of course, like Christine mentions, it's cool to be able to share and share that excitement of going on a Royal Caribbean cruise. Uh, Justin was on in Harmony last month. Like it so much. We booked Symphony and Allure in 2019 and 2020, respectively. Dude, love Harmony. Great ship. And I agree with you 120% on that one. Uh, there's oftentimes you go on a cruise, right? It's it's dangerous because you go on a roller coaster cruise. You have such an amazing time. And what do you inevitably want to do? Book another cruise, right? Uh, let's see here. Um, that is, sorry about the cat. The cat's just very loud. He's deaf, so he just meows extremely loud. And then looks for attention. Um, <laughs> Pascal says, need more vacation time. Absolutely. Uh, Jacqueline Bliss just got the Enchantment of the Seas while on while on the ship. Booked Mariner of the Seas. And you see, that's exactly what I'm talking about right there. Uh, Christine will book her 2020 cruise when she gets on the New Year's Eve 2018 cruise. Nice. Uh, Rodney really liked El Loco Fresh best of all, besides the main dining room. Um, Kaylin, how's the breakfast in the main dining room? Breakfast in the main dining room is, is great. Uh, it's the same breakfast menu every even, every morning of the cruise, so you'll have the same menu every day. The diff what the, the appeal of the breakfast in the main dining room is that it is obviously at a little slower pace than the Windjammer. It's, it's, it's a sit-down experience. The waiter comes to you. You're not walking around the uh, you know the, the room in order to pick out all your food. So it's definitely a little more relaxed thing. And I think it's you know really uh, what interests you, which kind of you know what you're first of all how much time you have um, and what you're looking to do with it. But I really love breakfast in the main dining room because it's a little classier it's a little more you know easy going so um pascal says always loves the breakfast in the in the main dining room uh makeup blues is not a dining question that's okay we're here to answer all questions by the way is there a way to recognize staff on any royal coming cruise i was on a disney cast member i was a disney cast member and have a guest and cast recognition program to award hardworking staff yes great question in fact i tell people all the time if you really want to help a crew member out i mean look 20 bucks helps everybody out right but that's a very short-term thing. If you want to help the this crew member, if you want to recognize their service, yes, uh, you can absolutely note that the best thing to do, honestly, is after your cruise, you'll be sent by, via email a post-cruise survey. In there will be an open field for you to recognize crew members. And yes, you should absolutely do that because that will go on their record. That will help them 
when they go to future contracts to obviously get renewed contracts and even promotions. It really makes a big difference there. Jay, 308 Days of Symphonies, President's Cruise, looking forward to the Ultimate Dining Package, even though he loves the main dining room. And I agree, Jay. I, I'm a huge main dining room fan, but on Oasis Clash ships, I tend to go for the dining packages because I like to be able to indulge a little bit in all the amazing dining choices on there. But otherwise, we're pretty much main dining room folks. Uh, Michael Bryan, uh, going on Anthem of the Seas in August, Mike wants to know, will there be an issue getting a My Time dining table for three each night? Uh, not if you do your homework, Mike. Uh, certainly, number one, if you book your uh, reservations for My Time Dining in advance, that means before the cruise on Royal Caribbean's website, yes, Mike, you'll have no problems whatsoever uh, getting that taken care of. Um, it's one of the tips we talked about earlier in this broadcast is if you want to eat during a peak time, that's 6.30 to 8 o'clock, do yourself a favor and make reservations. If you have a reservation, you'll be seated a heck of a lot faster than if you are if you don't have one. That's really the issue, Mike, is that people? some people will show up and you say, oh, we're, we don't have a reservation. We just want to be seated. So you're, it's basically, uh, you know, you're standing in a line. And it's going to be a long, it could be a longer experience. Depends on a lot of other factors, obviously. What time you're eating at, how big your table is. You mentioned the three top. So not a huge table there. But, you know, you're, how many people are ahead of you. A lot of other factors as well. But um, you shouldn't have any issues, Mike. But I would recommend making reservations in advance. Um I missed, uh, oh, there it is. Powerful female rights. I booked a royal suite for the first time on Alert 2020. Now I have to find some friends to join me. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, that's the, that's half the fun. In fact, to find people on board Powerful Female, I might also recommend you check out a face, uh, Facebook groups for your sailing. Oftentimes, you can find a lot of folks on there who are around there. Maybe you'll make some friends even before you get on board the ship, which will be a lot of fun. Uh, Jay loves Eggs Benedict for breakfast in the main dining room. Mm. Nancy Day, 58 Days of Liberty of the Season, enjoying the tips. Awesome. Um, Michelle Pulse, thank you for talking about breakfast in the main dining room. We didn't try it last time and definitely will this time. Yeah, it is a, I think it is a must-do experience. I guess some people don't love it per se or are, um, what's the word? Uh, you know, they, they don't really consider it or they just they overlook it. But I'll tell you, it is a really, really great choice. Kaylin, is the flow rider first come, first serve or do you reserve a spot or time? Generally speaking, Kaylin, the Flow Rider Surf Simulator is first come, first serve. There will be some times in which there are private lessons or, or private functions going on. But outside of that, you know, it's just first come, first serve. Uh, Justice, my partner and I both gained about a pound a day on the cruise. I recommend going on a diet before the cruise so the gain won't be so bad. Hey, you know what? It's part of vacation, right? Eh, you can indulge a little bit. Uh, Ronnie says, when, do you, when you get a suite, what type of extra perks do you get? If you get a grand suite or above, you'll get priority embarkation, you'll get access to the concierge lounge, you will have complimentary room service, you will get uh, a full-size bathtub in your room, walk-in closet, upgraded toilet amen amenities, so you don't have you have like you know, little bottles of shampoo and soap and whatnot. Uh, obviously, a lot more space. Um, those are the big ones right there. Uh, Brent is going on Merit of the Season 66 Days on the Pittsburgh Steelers Cruise. Betting if I should purchase the Lux Beverage Package. Um, you know, it's a really tough question, Brent, because obviously the the reason to buy a drink package wholeheartedly depends on you and how much you'll drink. I would tell people if you can, you need to be drinking about five to six drinks a day every day of your cruise. Now, you might be thinking, well, that's a lot to drink. And it is. I mean, compared to at home, I certainly don't drink five to six drinks a day at home. I, if I drink two drinks a day at home, I'm like, woohoo, spring break. But on a cruise ship, it's different, you know? And the math I tell people is, like, here's an example of how to break even very easily with the drink package, Brent. Is, you know, you can simply say, okay, you wake up in the morning, you go down to Cafe Promenade and get a espresso or a latte or something. So that's including your drink package. All right, you got one. It's not full, but you got, you got that under your belt. You have a Bloody Mary in the morning. You have, in the afternoon, from noon until 5 o'clock, you manage two drinks at the pool. Now you're up to three drinks and one coffee. Uh, you have two drinks at dinner. Now you're up to five cocktails and one coffee. A couple bottles of water, maybe an after-dinner drink, and boom, that's easy. You've, you've not only broken even, you've exceeded the value of the drink package for that day. Now, look, on one day, anybody can do that. Over the course of seven nights, it's harder to do. The longer the cruise, the harder it is to break even on the drink package. But, Brent, you know, the other major nice thing about the drink package is by purchasing it before your cruise, which I do recommend if you are going to book the drink package, to buy it before your cruise. By booking the drink package before your cruise, you're going to be able to also budget it. Because you'll pay for it at the time of purchase, 
which then means you you get to separate the cost, the total cost of your sailing. So you're not going to have like this monster bill at the end of the cruise. That is a major X factor to me that I really love. Even if I'm not so sure I'll break even on the drink package, being able to prepay for my drinks to me almost makes it worthwhile, even if the math is kind of fuzzy as to whether or not it makes financial sense. Denise, we're going to spring break cruise with kids on Independence of the Seas. What do you expect? Never done a peak time cruise. You know, you're going to need a lot more families, Denise. I mean, it's just the nature of the beast. Um, I'm not sure. How long is your cruise? Independence is probably, what, a four or five nighter? I mean, weekend cruises, you get a lot more college kids, a lot more like, woo, spring break. The longer the cruise, the less of that you get. You'll have more kids on there, but you'll have a fun time, Denise. I wouldn't worry too much about it. I mean, it's it's still a fun time no matter what. Um, Justin's got a great tip that I did not include in my top 10 tips, but he's absolutely right. If you're on an Oasis-class ship only, Johnny Rockets is open for breakfast uh, on your ships, and it's free, included. Nothing's free. You pay for it. But there's no charge to eat a Johnny Rockets on Oasis-class ships for breakfast. Only on Oasis-class ships, only for breakfast. Is it free? But it's a great choice. Absolutely. Um, Christine recommends walking the ship full circle at least twice before and after meals. This helps lessen weight gain. That's a really great tip right there. I don't know that I ever remember. I'm always like, oh, I'm so, I'm so full. I can't imagine walking again. But, you know. Uh, um, Brent, you're very welcome. Uh, Justin, on Harmony, there is a walking jogging deck on Deck 5. That's absolutely true. Uh, Keisha wants to know, drink packages are... Oh, rights, rather. I'm sorry. Uh, drink packages are worth it. Morning coffee, bottled water, a few drinks a day. Bam. Worth it. Uh, Michael, independence of these is seven nights. For seven night cruise, you'll have a lot less of this, the crazy spring break antics. I think you'll be fine on there uh, for that one. Kaylin, if we put a bid in for a room upgrade, when will we hear if we have it selected? Also, as if we don't like the location of that room. Um... The Royal Caribbean has said there is no indication of when you'll hear back, if at all. Okay, well, it's kind of like, don't call us, we'll call you situation, where with the room upgrade possibility, they will take your bid, and they'll keep it in mind, but it could be all the way, I think, I think all the way up to like two days before your sale date, they have to decide on that. So, um, there, there's no telling exactly when it'll be. Um, and your other question about the room question, I have the answer to on the blog. Uh, let me grab that for you real quick because uh, I want to make sure I'm getting the uh, correct information out there. Um, where is it? There it is. Uh, I'm just getting the uh, information for you about what happens after. Oh, yes. I guess cannot change... Cannot choose. I'm reading this off Royal Caribbean's thing. Guests cannot choose the location or specific features of the upgraded room as it depends on availability. So basically, there's no guarantee. Um, who asked me that question? Caitlin. About what room it is. Now, if they're, let me put it this way, Caitlin. If they assign you whatever you up, a balcony that you upgrade to, right? And there's another, bal there's another balcony room with the same category available, you could then change it at that point, I believe. But. Uh, I think you're kind of stuck with whatever they give you. You should assume that's the case. Uh, Mike Go, are the beds pillows relatively comfy on the ships? I think they are. I mean, obviously, Mike, you, you know this. Like, we all perceive comfort differently. But um, I find them pretty comfortable. I think they're on the harder side, a little firmer side, I mean. I like that. That doesn't bother me at all. But we, I think between me and my wife and people we cruise with, I think generally speaking, it's pretty darn good. I've, I've always slept well. And Keisha says the beds and pillows are super comfy. Um... Make it blue says, I'm also hard of hearing. Any recommendations on room types or help with entertainment options? Um, for hard of hearing, I'm not sure room type would matter all that much. Uh, in terms of getting uh, help with entertainment options, I would let the staff know ahead of time when you get to the get to the show a little early, whatever show you're talking about, and you know make sure you tell them, hey, I've got some hearing issues there. Is there a particular place I can sit that I will help? I don't know what works for you. Do you need to be near the speakers, near the stage, what have you? But let the staff know. And they can certainly work with you on that one. Uh, Donna, why isn't the White Knight more advertised and prepared on the Oasis? You know, Donna's a really good question. Donna's talking about there's a theme activity on, in this case, Oasis. He's on other ships as well. In which people, it's called like, you know, the White Hot Party or whatever. Where the idea is everyone's supposed to wear, you know, white clothing. And then you get like, all the like, glow sticks and like, you know, there's dancing and there's music and there's uh, uh, glow sticks and, and lights and fog machines. And it's a cool thing, right? It's a cool party. 
But, you know, I'm sure what Donna's getting at is, well, if they, if they warn people or, or told people about the event in advance, then you would get more people to, to dress for it. And really, Donna, and this is speculation on my part, but I've kind of heard this over the years, is the reason why they don't tell people about those kind of activities is there's really no guarantee. They don't want to guarantee that a certain activity or a certain event will definitely be available on their ship. Because can you imagine, Donna, if they say, okay, you know, there's going to be a white-out party night, and then you get on board the ship, and there isn't one. Well, some people might be upset about that. I I plaqued all this stuff where I thought there was going to be one. Crew's ruined, right? So from a customer or guest relations standpoint, it's actually easier to do the other way or better to do the other way where you just simply don't prom or don't tell them about these things. Now, of course, if you're a good Royal Caribbean cruise fan, you know that you can go to royalcaribbeanblog.com and look at a past cruise compass to figure out that there will be offered that option. But um, I think it has to do mostly with guest expectations and whatnot. Um I'm probably not the answer to, that you're looking for, but you know what I mean. Uh, Christine, what are all the Oasis class ships? There are four of them right now. Oasis, Allure, Harmony, and Symphony of the Seas. Um, let's see here. Uh, Mike says, how does the food from specialty restaurants compare to the, to the normal dining and buffet options? You know, a lot of the specialty restaurant options um, augment the regular food on there. I mean, you know, food runs a wide gamut of, you know, how good something tastes. I think, generally speaking, the food on Royal Caribbean is, is pretty darn good. Most of the food is probably in the range of good to very good, with a couple outliers that are excellent, and some that are maybe even like, ooh, that wasn't my favorite. Um, and especially restaurant food is um, really, a lot of the cuisines tend to, it tends to offer food that's not available elsewhere on the ship, you know, or not easily available elsewhere on the ship. And I really like it. I really I like being able to again what I recommend and what I do personally is I augment especially restaurants with the main dining room. So I'll eat in the main dining room in the wind jammer and all that. But here and there I'll work in especially restaurant meal to kind of you know fill in the gaps. Like I like sushi and you know what if I want sushi I got to go to Izumi on board. It's a fabulous option and we'll do that. Um, Ronnie, how does Royal Caribbean discriminate room category? Category means. Uh, how they figure it out? I mean, there's a whole pattern to it. It has to do with pricing, options, space, things of that nature. I mean, there's four basic room categories. I mean, really basic. you got interior rooms, ocean view rooms, balconies, and suites. All right, that's the four basics. From then on, Ronnie, they break it down based on the size of the room, how many people can fit in the room, and the location of the stateroom. Sometimes, you know, a room that's more desirable will have a higher price than the room that's on, like, all the way at the end of the ships, as, as an example. So those are the basics of it without getting into a large discussion on it. Uh, Kathy, are the menus of the main dining room the same across all ships? They're very similar, Kathy. Royal Caribbean's main dining room has pretty much a standard fleet-wide menu. Um, their menus do vary. There's a couple of variations here and there. Um, but generally speaking, you'll see a lot of carryover. In some case, in most cases, a lot of the ships are exactly the same. There's just a couple, like sometimes a new ship comes, uh, joins the fleet or there's a refurbishment, they get kind of like an upgraded version or slight, slight variations, but, you know, hopefully that makes kind of sense there. Uh, Kayla, what are the normal discounts given when booking future crews on board? Primarily onboard credit. You'll get extra onboard credit. The price is the same whether you book it on board the ship or at land. The difference is Royal Caribbean will give you an extra free money to spend on that cruise uh, by booking it on board. That's kind of the reward for it. Hopefully that makes sense. So there's no discount on the fare. You just get extra money in your pocket for later on. Uh, Pascal, regarding Izumi, I'm a sushi freak. Can you stop and just have a roll at the sushi bar without making a reservation? Absolutely. I've almost never, I don't think I've ever been turned away from that option. I don't think so. And I go quite a bit, Pascal, for that exact reason. I'll go there for like, an, uh, I call it pre-dinner. Um, my wife and kids are getting ready for dinner. We eat dinner at 8 o'clock. I'll pop down there at 5.30 to grab like one roll to take back to the room or maybe eat at the sushi bar. No problem at all. Um, have I eaten at Hooked? I took your word of it because I, you like sushi. So do I. Uh, I did. Eat, thank you, D. I did eat at Hooked on Symphony twice. Once for lunch, once for dinner. I thought it was. I thought it was good, but not. It wasn't my favorite. It wasn't amazing. Now, granted, full disclosure, I don't eat shellfish, and the bulk of the Hooked menu are like mussels and clams and oysters, things I don't eat. Shrimp, crab. I don't eat those things. So, I'm probably not the person to ask about it. I did eat with three different people who do eat shellfish and they kind of said yeah they liked it it wasn't like we were like oh god this is terrible but it wasn't our favorite specialty restaurant by any means we weren't like blown away by it if that makes any kind of sense um 
Michael, what's up? Would you recommend Wonderland? I think it's absolutely worth doing at least once. Wonderland is a re especially a restaurant on some Royal Caribbean ships that's loosely themed to Alice in Wonderland. Um, the food is very creative looking. I mean, at the end of the day, they're serving you know basic food, but the thing is, they they it's it's crafted and designed to look like rocks or uh, grass and other weird things. It's it's kind of meant to like you know like woo looking through the looking or peeking through the looking glass but uh it's actually really really good i, I would recommend doing it at least once because it is a really fun experience uh sua loves royal caribbean we had three times we had cruised three times since november 2017 booked liberty for october 2019 and a my time dining are we able to change our tables if we want middle room tables versus window tables you can when you get to check in for my time dining you can tell them i would like to eat in this location or that location Keeping in mind that that may require you to wait longer because they may have a free table up by the windows, but you want a room, you want a table over there. As long as you're okay with that, absolutely. Especially with um, with my time dining, that's really one of the best reasons or best ways to take advantage of it because you have that opportunity to, you know, every night's a different reservation. You're not like traditional dining where you're assigned a particular table. Hello, just Pamela. Welcome. Jamie Taylor wants to know if I have my time dining at 8 p.m. and want to go earlier or later. Uh, will they still let me come in at not 8 p.m.? Are you saying my time or traditional, Jamie? If you have my time, like you book 8 o'clock in advance, and then like that day you're like, oh, I'm really hungry. I'd love to go in at 6. Yes, you can go in early. You just go to the standby line. You know what I mean? Shmael, is chops worth the money? I think it is. Yeah. I would say what's more worth the money. More worth, that's not really good English at all. I think what's a better value, Shmael, to make it easier for you to handle that price is to look into a dining package. Because if you get a dining package, that brings the price of a place like Chops down. It cuts it like by half. It's really a much better value. It obviously, requires you to eat at more restaurants, but it saves you a lot of money. And there's some trade-offs with that, but I think it is worth it. Um, Make a blue for buffet. Is there a way to find out about vegetarian, gluten-free, dairy-free options at the Wind Jammer? Yeah, they often have uh, Make a Blue this at, at each station. There'll be signs, and they'll indicate if it's vegetarian. In fact, Royal Green has a large gluten-free section. You'll see a big sign that says gluten-free. Lots of choices there. And again, if you have any questions, talk to the staff there. They're so helpful. They'll definitely go out of their way to make sure, oh, yeah, this is what this is vegetarian, this is vegetarian, that's dairy-free, that's gluten-free, that's full of bacon. You know, they can kind of go with you on that one. So, Awesome, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us here. I'm going to wrap up this video. My name has been Matt. Thank you for joining us here. If you're looking for more Royal Caribbean news, information, fun, advice, everything you need to have a great Royal Caribbean cruise, check out royalcaribbeanblog.com. And don't forget, we are live here every Friday, hanging out with you guys on YouTube. So please come join us here live. It's a lot of fun. I can't wait to do this again. If we don't speak before this, Happy New Year. Have a great rest of your day. Do something fun. And we'll talk again very soon right here on YouTube. Thanks, guys.